The shepherds went in haste and found Mary and Joseph and the infant lying in a manger. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Glad to have you here and also a very Merry Christmas to you. Anytime we always have a smaller crowd because today is certainly quite a snowy day, I always think the church wraps its mantle of protection around us. And certainly on a snowy December day like this, it's a time to just thank God for his many blessings that he's bestowed on our families and our lives and certainly safety of all of our friends too as we celebrate this Christmas season ever new. There's a beauty to a snowfall and there's a beauty to the gentleness as Lord is the author of all creation. Today in a, se- a special way we celebrate Holy Family Sunday. So we welcome you here as we gather around this altar. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Our Gloria today, which remembers the angels above that nativity scene on on Christmas night, may be found on page 6. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who are pleased to give us the shining example of the Holy Family, graciously grant that we may imitate them in practicing the virtues of family life and in the bonds of charity. And so in the joy of your house, delight one day in eternal rewards. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. The word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am your shield. I will make your reward very great. But Abram said, O Lord God, what good will your gifts be if I keep on being childless and have as my heir the steward of my house, Eliezer? Abraham continued, See, you have given me no offspring, and so one of my servants will be my heir. Then the word of the Lord came to him, No, that one shall not be your heir. Your own issue shall be your heir. The Lord took Abram outside and said, Look up at the sky and count the stars if you can. Just so, he added, shall your descendants be. Abram put his faith in the Lord, who credited it to him as an act of righteousness. The Lord took note of Sarah as he had said he would. He did for her as he had promised. Sarah became pregnant and bore Abraham a son in his old age, and at this set time that God had stated. Abraham gave the name Isaac to the son of his whom Sarah bore him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response, the Lord remembers his covenant forever. The The Lord Lord remembers remembers his covenant covenant forever. forever. Give thanks to the Lord, invoke his name, make known among the nations his deeds. Sing to him, sing his praise, 
proclaim all his wondrous deeds. The Lord remembers his covenant forever. Glory in his holy name. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. Look to the Lord in his strength. Constantly seek his face. The Lord remembers his covenant forever. Your descendants of Abraham, his servants, sons of Jacob, his chosen ones. He, the Lord, is our God. Throughout the earth, his judgments prevail. The Lord remembers his covenant forever. He remembers forever his covenant, which he made binding for a thousand generations, which he entered into with Abraham and by his oath to Isaac. The Lord remembers his covenant forever. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, by faith Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to a place that he was to receive as an inheritance. He went out, not knowing where he was to go. By faith, he received power to generate, even though he was past the normal age. And Sarah herself was sterile. For he thought that the one who had made the promise was trustworthy. So it was that there came forth from one man, himself as good as dead, descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as countless as the sands on the seashore. By faith, Abraham, when put to the test, offered up Isaac, and he who had received the promises was ready to offer his only son, of whom it was said, Through Isaac, descendants shall bear your name. He reasoned that God was able to raise even from the dead, and he received Isaac back as a symbol. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. When the days were completed for their purification, according to the law of Moses, they took him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, just as it is written in the law of the Lord. Every male that opens the womb shall be consecrated to the Lord, and to offer the sacrifice of a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons, in accordance with the dictate in the law of the Lord. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, awaiting the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he should not see death before he had seen the Christ of the Lord. He came in the Spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to perform the custom of the law in regard to him, he took him into his arms and blessed God, saying, Now, Master, you may let your servant go in peace according to your word, for my eyes have seen your salvation, which you prepared in sight of all the peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles, and glory for your people Israel. The child's father and mother were amazed at what was said about him. And Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, Behold, this child is destined for the fall and rise of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be contradicted. And you yourself a sword will pierce, 
so that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. There was also a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was advanced in years, having lived seven years with her husband after a marriage, and then as a widow until she was 84. She never left the temple, but worshipped night and day with fasting and prayer. And coming forward at that very time, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were awaiting the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had fulfilled all the prescriptions of the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Progressive Insurance has this commercial right now of a a man named Dr. Rick. And the sum and substance of the commercial is they can't save you from becoming your parents. If you, they, so they'll show someone in the store and he's helping out the, the next customer in the store and they're saying you don't need to do that. And there's another one where a person's pulling out of a parking spot and, and someone's assisting someone in reverse and they're saying you don't have to do that and so forth. But the progressive ad goes that we can't you know, save you from being your parents, but we can save you if you bundle home and, and auto insurance together. But if we think about our life today as we celebrate Holy Family, we're a lot like our mom and dad. We become a lot. They're, they're our first teachers in everything. Our first teachers from the faith that would bring us out on a snowy day like this and also to remember the importance when it comes to Christmas time. But I know for myself, I walk a certain way and I act a certain way. I say please and thank you the way I was trained. I open the door for the next person. I am at, my, at a dinner table at 5.30 when, when I was growing up. And in many ways, I can become very, very predictable. And I'll bet there's ways in which all of us, as we you know, listen to this Mass and follow along, we become a lot like our mom and dad. We're trained that way. When we think of the Lord as part of our holy family, our own family, and just as we are all connected there together, we have a Lord who also knows precisely where we are and where we go and watches over us and no matter our shortcomings, wants us to come to him and come to him and take that rest. The Christmas time itself is always wrapped with family. If we think about how many times that we get in the mail a picture card right now. Very, very popular for families to do that. Or Christmas cards that would show Jesus, Mary, and Joseph on the cover or ways in which we see families gathered around and we talk about Christmas cheer together. That's why the family is so central to not only our world, but it's central to the church that on the first Sunday after Christmas, no matter what day it lands, we would celebrate Holy Family. The church is so wrapped into family that every three years we have a world day of families. And the next time that the families gather as a church, throughout the entire world, is the year 2021, this year that we're going to start in a, in a couple of days, really, in a few days. But in June, from June 23 to 27 in Rome, assuming how the pandemic lands out, but it was scheduled three years ago, they will come together for a World Day of Families. This year's central theme is called Family Love, a vocation and a path to holiness. So that's the slogan for the family that's coming up in the year 2021. But basically what it's telling us is that we want to love each other and we want to focus on that love, starting with our family love. That when we, family, when we love our family and accept their shortcomings and accept, accept their victories too, but when we center on a love that God gives us our family, no matter who they are, we start to center on that's our purpose in life to celebrate that family. And that's how we grow in a holiness, radiating God's love like this family, the holy family in this manger scene, and allowing that family love to grow. 
And as we love our God and center on that family that he gives us and offer that love, let it radiate outward to our extended family, the world. And it's really based on relationship, that we're all related, but starting with our own family to love them more and then build on that. That's the focus of all the readings today that we see. Our first reading from the book of Genesis, where Abram's told, I will be your shield from the Lord. But look up in the sky, in the sky, see the stars as numerous as there, and those descendants will be numerous. You will have an incredible family. Trust in me. Put your faith in me. The book of Hebrews follows the same thing about telling us that we always not need to be faithful. But I think it climaxes when we see the presentation today of Mary and Joseph following the Jewish prescriptions about bringing the two turtle doves or you know, bringing them to the church and offering them as, a, as, a, as an offering to God. But it shows them coming to the church and meeting St. Simeon and meeting Anna. Actually, John Paul II says in this mystery of the rosary, this presentation, that it's joy mixed with some drama. And I think our family lives are joy mixed with drama too. No family is perfect, but yet there are certainly some joys that we need to celebrate in family, and we need to radiate that love. But I think it teaches us that family life is tough, even for the holy family. But what God wants us to do is work out those struggles together. And we find in our gospel, I think in a really beautiful way, the way it closes, is that after the presentation, they go back to Nazareth, and Jesus is obedient to his parents. He listens to them and he follows them, but they form that holy family. If we look to the book of Genesis, that's what the calling was as well with faithfulness, to be obedient and to follow the God's commands. I think even the term obedient is important because obedience doesn't mean that we're going to be blind and follow someone with a blind love, but it's a matter of following and listening intensively to another person's um, talking to us or speaking to us. If there was one problem that we could all say in this world, people have a hard time talking to each other. They have a hard time resolving disagreements with each other. They have a hard time listening to each other. But that's what we find this holy family doing. They know that family life is hard, it's joy mixed with some drama, but they listen to each other and they love each other no matter what happens. And that we have a failure, I think, right now in our society when we line up Democratic versus Republican and liberal versus conservative and the whole gambit of listening to another person's viewpoint, you may not agree with it, but also loving them anyway. And there becomes a lack of respect in society. So we're called to model this holy family in which Jesus goes back to, Jeru goes back to Nazareth and listens intensively to his parents and follows them, not following society instead. And we're called to be leaven of the world. That's what makes us Christian, following Christ. Pope Francis began a couple of weeks ago a year of St. Joseph. And there's a reason why he did this. He issued a letter this year, just a few weeks ago, an apostolic letter called Patris Cordiae, which means with a father's heart, and he discusses St. Joseph in that apostolic letter, setting forth a year of St. Joseph or a year of family in such a beautiful way. St. Joseph, to me, is probably one of the most misunderstood people in the Nativity or the Holy Family. We certainly know a lot about Mary. We hear about Mary all throughout the year. We certainly know a lot about Jesus. But who's the one that's always there and often not mentioned is St. Joseph. And as we begin this year of Joseph, which began a couple, year, a couple weeks ago on December 8th, it goes to December 8th, 2021. But Pope Francis describes St. Joseph appropriately as a beloved father, a tender and loving father, an obedient father, an accepting father, a father who is courageous, a working father, and a father in the shadows. And it makes all of us take a look at the role of St. Joseph, who's also the patron saint of our church, the patron saint of our diocese. 
150 years ago this year, Blessed Pope Pius IX set forth Joseph as the patron saint of our church. And when Pope Francis set forth this next year to celebrate him, he said it because we're celebrating a milestone at 150 years, but it's the role of the Holy Family. So all throughout the year, beginning this weekend, every time we pray for the Mass intentions that we have in the silence of our hearts, we do it at every daily Mass, we do it at every weekend Mass, it will be through the intercession of St. Joseph um, in our parish. And it's a way of uniting our family's prayers and our immediate prayers with St. Joseph himself. If we look at that nativity from St. Joseph, he's got this staff in his arm that he's got there as he's gazing upon um, the child Jesus in this nativity scene. I did some research on that staff. The first time the staff is mentioned in scriptures is actually in the book of Exodus, chapter 4, verse 2. And right after Moses is um, at the burning bush and he's there seeing this bush and, and, and he speaks to the Lord, the Lord asks him, what do you have in your hand? And he's got a staff. So he has a staff because he's a shepherd and he's, he's follow, watching over sheep. And what the Lord says to, Joseph, or says to Moses in the uh, fourth chapter of Exodus, he tells him to take that staff in his arm and throw it on the ground. He places it on the ground. That staff becomes a snake. And then the Lord says to Moses, pick up that snake by the tail. And as he does, it becomes a staff. And that staff that he holds then is called the staff of God or the rod of God. That's the staff that Joseph has in his arms here. But it shows the protection of that holy family and that protection of Joseph in, in, the, in the picture of the nativity scene. But that staff is the same staff that at the Red Sea, at the parting of the Red Sea, Moses was placed to told to place that staff in the ground to part that sea for the Israelites to come to freedom. That staff also becomes the crozier that bishops would hold through our church. Our, our own bishop has his own crozier. And that staff has a hook on it to show that and the hook points outward to the people, meaning it's that, that protecting theme with St. Joseph, with Moses, with the Lord saying, I am the good shepherd. I watch over my, she my sheep, my flock. They, my sheep know my name. That's the role of St. Joseph. There are other um, nativity scenes. I was given this, this Christmas, which is another picture of St. Joseph. Here he's got a lantern in his, in his hand. And it shows the guiding light where he leads us out of the darkness, that protector, and he leads us into the light. It's a central way of looking at Joseph. And I think a nice thing to do is to take a look at your own nativity scene. And how is Joseph pictured there? How is he depicted? He could be pictured with a, a lantern in some nativity scenes. He's pictured with a staff and ours. But it represents that protector. He's the one that's at the presentation in our gospel. He's the one that Jesus is obedient to. And he's the one that calls all of us to a greater life of holiness, where we look out for our family members and we let that love from God that gave us our family radiate outward. Joseph plays a central role in the nativity. He's the one that learns that Mary's expecting a child. But he doesn't reject her when he's told by an angel to take her in. And he takes her in and marries her and watches over the baby Jesus. He's also the one that was with the enrollment in the nativity scene where they go to Bethlehem because that's his home. He ends up following the Lord and following Jesus and following Mary. But he's at all the critical points. And it shows that protecting in that watchful arm. Mary and the Holy Family is the one that follows Joseph on traveling to Bethlehem to have her child. She's the one even close to delivery, going on that, you know, there to, to Bethlehem. She's the one depicted on the donkey on the flight to Egypt 
right when they were killing the children and as we celebrate that this week in the Christmas octave. She's the one at the foot of the cross, always remaining faithful, like we hear in the book of Genesis, uh, where Abram was told to be faithful, or the book of Hebrews, our second reading, about being faithful. And certainly Jesus shows that faithfulness, where even in the Garden of Gethsemane, he says to the Father, not my will, but yours. That's the role of the Holy Family. As we come together here today on this Christmas octave, it's a time for us to begin to respect each other all the more. We've got each other. That's all we've got. And we need to look out for our family members and let it radiate. Meaning husbands love your wives, brothers love your sisters, sisters love, you know, your brothers and your sisters and um, spouses love each other with that love of the Holy Family and offer that mutual respect by radiating that Holy Family, by entrusting your year and your family and your life to the patronage of St. Joseph and a year of St. Joseph, by celebrating the joys of family, knowing that it's a vocation and a love that radiates from God and radiates outward, we can celebrate Holy Family all the more. As we gather around this Mass today in the Eucharistic prayer, I think it's important to think about how family is so much part of that prayer. We always pray every time that we gather for Mass that the entire people that God calls all of humanity to his own, and we ask God to listen graciously to the prayers of this family that is summoned before him, whether we're here in person or we're listening to it through the internet, to gather all the scattered children throughout the world. It's all about family. May we offer that mutual respect, that mutual faithfulness, and think in your own way how you can celebrate family this week, this Christmas, in a unique way that thanks God for the gifts of children, the gifts of friends, the gifts, gifts of relatives, and by offering a mutual respect in a mutual obedience to each other by being faithful. We'll close this, this uh, year at the end of the year at just as it begins by thanking God through the intercession of St. Joseph in a year of St. Joseph, knowing that we all have a role in the family in God's plan of creation. May we take that role and give it the best that we've got offering a love to others and respecting family, letting God be glorified by our actions. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. I invite you to rise as we now renew our baptismal promises using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Together, let us offer our petitions to the Father, knowing that he loves us and is always there to guide us. For the Church and all the faithful throughout the world, for you and I, as we do our work in this world, May God's guidance be upon every member living out the gospel message and being a member of that universal holy family. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the salvation of the world and for the conversion away from sin and toward the gospel and gospel values, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those undergoing trials, those that have no place to no one no place to sleep tonight on a snowy, um, snowy night, we pray for all of our parasyclists, all those that grieve the loss of another, all those that find 
holidays and Christmas difficult in their life. May the Holy Spirit bless them with strength and courage, and may they, may they be led to the Christmas light, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us gathered here and all those that participate um, remotely, may the Holy Spirit help us grow in a faith, hope, and love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, we remember in a special way the, the family of Danny Vane, whose funeral was celebrated this morning. We pray for all the faithful departed and for our Mass intention today. We remember in a special way Thomas R. Nunn and Anthony J. Russo. Anthony Russo died on December 24th a couple years ago, and uh, Sister Pat would be here if it wasn't for snow. We pray for Thomas, for Anthony, for all the faithful departed. May they be welcomed into the heavenly community and rest in eternal peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for those prayers that we offer in the silence of our hearts through the intercession of St. Joseph. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, hear our prayers and grant us every good thing according to your will. And we ask this all through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all, his holy church. We offer you, Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation, humbly asking that through the intercession of the Virgin Mother of God and St. Joseph, you may establish our families firmly in your grace and your peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For in the mystery of the Word made flesh, a new light of your glory has shone upon the eyes of our mind, so that as we recognize in him God made visible, we may be caught up through him in love of things invisible. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, O Son of the Highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, O Son of the Highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. 
Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for a consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. the mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you, at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. 
For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not at our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other in an indirect way a sign of God's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Our prayer of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. 
I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you in my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Our God has appeared on the earth and lived among us. Let us pray. Bring those you refresh with this heavenly sacrament, most merciful Father, to imitate constantly the example of the Holy Family, so that after the trials of this world we may share their company forever through Christ our Lord. Amen. I thank you for coming out today on a really snowy day. I don't think anyone expected this kind of snow. But it's a way of welcoming Christmas in all the more. And as you see the beauty of the snow outside, um, as it's gorgeous out right now, there's nothing more beautiful than it. Just know of God's creative plan and how we have a role in it as well. I want to wish you a very good Christmas week as we continue that Christmas octave. Uh, on Thursday night, we have our, our New Year's Eve Mass, which is at 7 o'clock. And uh, the January 1st, which is Friday, is at 8.30 in the morning. And it's a New Year's Eve, but it's also Mary, the Mother of God. It's a holy day of obligation that closes the Christmas octave, but also celebrates not only the Blessed Virgin Mary and her role in the Nativity, but also World Day of Peace is this Friday. In a world that can be somewhat constricted, it's a, it's a time in which there's more peace needed than ever. I wish you and your family a wonderful Christmas week. And may we just grow in a love of the Holy Family and place it under the protection through this next year of St. Joseph himself. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Oh.